Hi everybody, uh, thanks for subscribing to my blog and my YouTube channel. And this, uh, the topic this week is going to be about law of attraction and uh, quantum theory and entanglement. Is it possible that they could in any way be related or uh, explain some of the effects of the law of attraction. Well, uh, we'll have to wait and see and find out, won't we? Uh, the good news is that this will be the last in this uh, present series of migraine-inducing uh, videos because I can't take any more pain. However, I do think it uh, could be important, so stay with me for uh, a few more minutes. Now, the universe is made up of particles and subatomic particles, and even our body is, uh, for that matter. And the vast amount of, uh, of the universe is empty space, apart from these particles, which are tiny. Uh, and indeed, this space is not entirely empty because energy can travel through it, and uh, that is very important. These particles, uh, they could be photons, they could be electrons, they could be neutrinos, um, they even could be molecules, which are collections of these things. And the interesting thing about it is that when any of them interact with another particle, they start to share the same properties. Not only do they share it in the moment, but they share it forever after until something else happens, and this can be at huge distances. This is a huge mystery and was first described in 1935 in a paper by Einstein, um, Podolsky and Rosen, and because of their names it's known as the EPR um, paradox. And when, when these uh, particles share the same properties, that is what entanglement is, is, is uh, called. And the picture becomes even more confusing when these particles change their behavior when anybody is watching them, or perhaps more accurately, performing an experiment on them. It's as if the particles know that they're being watched, just as when they interact with each other and they become entangled, it's almost as if they know what the other particle is doing, even if it's thousands or even light years away. Now, Einstein, in particular, he, um, he, he couldn't accept these, uh, these theories, and they remain theories to this day, and he called this um, famously spooky action at a distance, and he thought that sometime somebody would be able to explain what then and now is still unexplainable. And shortly after Schrodinger did a lot of his experiments, and he's famous for his famous dead cat in the box, which I have tried to explain previously and gave up, and so I won't bore you with that one again. Back to the law of attraction and back to um, what is not known and what is known, which is a lot smaller, there is a big experiment going on at the moment in Europe called the Hadron Collider, when they are smashing all of these particles and subatomic particles together at speeds approaching the speed of light and waiting to see what, hap what, what happens. It all sounds rather frightening, but um, they do reassure us that there's nothing to be frightened about. Um, it's just that there are a lot of unknown unknowns out there, and so we shouldn't worry. Mm, so don't worry anybody. What does this have to do with the law of attraction? Well, time will tell, possibly. It could be that as we know more about entanglement and um, the entrainment that I mentioned in the last week's blog, then we will start to get a clue as to how the law of attraction might work, because there are many people are, that are convinced that it does. And I have to say that I'm one of them, and I can only go on my own experiences, and those are my clients. But something strange is going on. So, Deep breath. That's enough for this week. Uh, next week will be on a much simpler subject, I hope. Um, it will also be related to the law of attraction, and um, we will see what happens after that. So, in the meantime, um, try not to get your subatomic particles too entangled, and if they do, then just see what they're doing, because then they'll stop doing it and do something else. Okay, goodbye for now.